us pray. Father, thank you for the privilege that is ours to share together. Thank you for your word that's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you that the entrance of your word gives us light. We determine to walk in the light as you're in the light and have fellowship with you, fellowship with one another, knowing that the blood of Jesus Christ, your son, cleanses us from all sin. Thank you for living big in me today and giving me these lips of clay to un to speak the unsearchable riches of Christ. Thank you for these believers that have gathered in your name. Thank you for the oneness of your spirit that is settled upon each of our hearts. As we share together, we pray that you would promote us to be used sovereignly, supernaturally, to establish your dominion in our city to see many come to Christ as a result of the faithfulness of our witness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me just read a passage of scripture uh, from Matthew, and I, I promise I will not be before you long. Uh, those are the, the last words of a long-winded preacher. In Matthew chapter uh, 28, you, you're familiar with this passage of Scripture. Uh, it's called the Great Commission. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Can you say amen to that? Say amen again. It's so important for all of us to recognize that we are human. Come on, nudge somebody. Say, you're human. Nah, come on. Really, you're human. Though you're filled with the Spirit of God, and though you've heard the Lord speak to your heart, though you've been guided, filled with His Spirit, and you sense His presence in our midst, you need to recognize also that this word is a word of encouragement. If not to you, it's the word of encouragement to me. Because it says here that the 11 went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. They were there in obedience to what Jesus said. And then we, we see in verse 17, when they saw him, when they saw the Lord Jesus, they worshiped him. That must have been a powerful worship service. To see him after his death on the cross, after his blood was shed, after they laid him in a tomb, and then on the third day he gets up from the grave. Song poet said, up from the grave he arose, a mighty conqueror o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. But in the midst of the miracle of the resurrection of Christ, here he is in this great commission scene where we are told the 11 disciples gathered by Jesus' command. Only 11 of them because we know that the 12th disciple, Judas, hung himself. So in the midst of victory on one side, there's 
a picture of defeat on, defeat on the other. It doesn't have to be you. It is true that the one who wrote the text, Matthew, was a disciple, later called an apostle. And he included that, that when they saw Jesus, they worshiped him. What a, what, I don't, we're not told what they said. Did they say hallelujah? Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. I mean, much like what they heard on his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But here he is after his death, after the crucifixion. When he was in the tomb, they scattered uh, many of them, ran in different directions. You, you might have thought that all of the work that he had done in their midst for three to three and a half years was all lost because none stood strong. It looked as though Everything that he had poured out, everything that he had said was lost. Even one of the strongest apostles, one of the strongest disciples told the Lord, I will die for you. I will never deny you. And Jesus said to him, before the cock crows twice, you'll deny me thrice. And he resisted. I will never, that'll never happen to me. But he did deny the Lord. He was ashamed of it. He wept bitterly. Why am I saying all of this? I'm saying it so that you can see that the apostles are, we are told that the apostles, they they worshiped the Lord when they saw him. He's risen from the dead. But then this phrase, some doubt it. Come on, touch somebody, some, some doubt it. But even in the midst of doubt, they didn't go anywhere. They stood strong. Even in the midst of doubt, the fact, and we're not told how Matthew, who wrote the text, knew who had doubted. He just, he just knew. There must have been conversations after the ascension. There must have been a time of their gathering. As they went out to make disciples of all nations, there must have, have been some talk amongst them about how did you feel? What did you think when he said this and when he did that? We worshiped him. Yeah, but some of us doubt it. It must have been a part of their conversation. Some opened wide their hearts and said, ah, 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 you guys can look at me funny, I, and I, I, I'm a... I'm ashamed of myself to even say this, but even though I saw him, I doubt it. There was an unsettling within me. Those are the disciples that changed the world. When they got some, when they got to one place, the folk, the, some folk testified about them, these that have turned the world upside down have come hither to us. This testimony that we've heard from Elijah and, and from others of you, a brother that came and shared with us that we are one. And I, I recognize that we're in different groups in different churches and and there are de denominational divisions. And, you know, I, I was raised up in a church that was against denominationalism. 
we just called ourselves the church of God. Like we're the only one. But the real deal is that you're going to fight through doubt. You're going to fight through the failure of some. Come on, Judas hung himself. Some want to say that he was never saved, never a disciple. I'm not trying to get into a denominational or doctrinal debate with you. But Judas hung himself. He was a disciple. When Jesus sent out the 12 and told them, preach the word. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Freely you've received. Freely give. Now we're not told individually what different ones did. But I believe that Judas along with the others went out and performed ministry. I got one clap. And... and I got a few amens. The deal is that you're going to experience the highs and the lows of ministry. I came to Boston in 1972 to pastor a church of 41 people. Amen. And I, I was overjoyed that I, I found out how many voted for me. It was, a Democrat, it was a democratically run church, and so I found out how many voted for me. And to my joy, I got every vote And I found out who that one was. <laughs> and when I heard her testimony, a woman old enough to be my mother, when I heard, I was 26 when I came, when I heard her testimony as to why she didn't vote yes, she said, he's too young, he's too inexperienced. And I thought to myself, Amen to that sweet prayer. I was still in school, still in seminary, still studying, still praying, still learning the ways of God. And as strong as you are or as strong as you think you are, you want to stay on your knees. You want to stay in the path. You don't want to take anything for granted. Because this word is a true word. It says that they worshipped him. What I, We're not told the words that they said. Probably hallelujah. Probably glory to God. Lord, I thank you that I'm, I'm seeing my salvation before my very eyes. But in the midst of that, there were some folk that were standing off to the side saying, is this really the Lord? Is this a vision? Some doubted. That ought to make you feel good about yourself. Because these were folk, these, not, not 12 disciples, there were just 11. That's what the text says. Judas is gone. He had already committed suicide. These that spent three and a half or so years with the Lord, the greatest, te the greatest teacher ever, and some of them doubted. I don't know about you, but I feel good when, when strong, stalwart apostles have some doubt. Come on, I'm, I'm not the only one. Don't you feel good? 
When you see that there are some folk that you've always held in high esteem are experiencing some struggles, that are going through some difficulties, that the things that you all, that, that the devil told you that if you were really saved, you would, that what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, that, that would never happen. And then you see it happening to one of your brothers and your sisters that you looked up to. You think that it's time to put on the whole armor of God. It's time to take a hallelujah stand. Whether you feel like saying hallelujah or not. But to be in the fight. Fight, that, that's really the word of encouragement from the apostle. There in 1 Timothy, as he's speaking, he's writing to his spiritual son. He says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. Flee all of the craziness that you're hearing about, that I'm writing about. Flee these things. And then he says, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, meekness. And then he ends up by saying, fight the good fight of the faith. Lay hold on to eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called when you made a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. You are someone that God desperately wants to use. Can you say that? Can you say that about yourself? Lord, I know you want to use me. Come on, say that. Lord, I know you want to use me. With all of my weaknesses, with all of my humanity, with the failures that the enemy keeps reminding me of, though he's already forgiven me. I'm going to continue to run this race. I'm going to continue to fight the good fight of faith. I'm going to continue to lift up the banner of Jesus. And recognize that he ended up saying, even to the ones who doubted, <laughs> he knew who they were. How many, how few. But he said, go and make disciples of all nations. I, I'm of a mind that in order to make a disciple of another person, you can't do it in pride. You got to be someone who recognizes the weaknesses that are in your own life, see them in your brother or your sister, and then begin to strengthen them with what God used to strengthen you. If someone spoke a word of encouragement, even though it wasn't spoken to you directly, you heard it in the service, you heard it by someone speaking from the pulpit. But it encouraged you. You left there, you left there renewed, determined to run with perseverance this race. And if you'll do that, if you'll not let the devil discourage you, if you'll not let your fellow believers discourage you, we will stand before the Lord one day and hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant.